Today, we have here with us Wuriman Ong of Ong Chan Kuang Designs, a studio in, based in Bali whose handcrafted light fixtures I'm pretty sure many of us must have seen in a lot of interior spaces. And I truly believe it is because the brand successfully marries traditional crafts with modern elements. Pudiman graduated the Gray School of Art at Robert Gordon University in Scotland, and his works have mainly been influenced by Asian culture. He has since then gained international recognition and is continuing to forge his past to bring along Indonesian culture out in the world wherever his works travel. So today, Budiman is going to share with us about how he injects soul and identity into his handcrafted lighting designs since he started the studio back in 2008. Thank you so much, Budiman, for joining us today. So maybe to start, Budiman, why don't you tell us about how it all started? Was there a specific moment in your life that made you curious about material manipulation? Sure. I think uh, I'm uh, a person with a lot of curiosity and I'm very easily bored, I think. That's the two things that kind of define me quite a lot. Uh, and I'm always looking for a project mm -hmm. to do. And ever since I was very small, I always looking for things to do with my hands. And, you know, as a Chinese, we have uh, a lot of praying to do. And then there's a lot of paper folding. It's very morbid to talk about it because it's for <laughs> the people that's gone. But um, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of, uh, I do that a lot when I was young. And also during the Chinese New Year, usually there's a lot of these uh, Chinese New Year celebrations. And I'm mm -hmm. basically quite famous amongst uh, my neighbor because they like me to do things for them for the decorations. But um, <laughs> if, if we talk about a time, I think at school, when I did the uh, art and design school, that kind of helped me a lot. I think when you're young, you do not aware of things, you just do. When you're at school, you start to think about more sort of uh, self-critical evaluations on what you are doing. So it's more mm. focused, right? And I think I have a, right. a very good tutors that direct me toward a certain area that I love to do. I think after a certain point, after you do a lot of this, um, different things at college, then you finally realize like what you, what is inside you that you like to do best, which is uh, material explorations. Mm. That's what I did a lot then and I still do a lot now in the work that I, I, I am doing now. So, yeah. Oh wow, that's so wonderful to be able to follow up on that interest ever since you were young. And I think that passion really speaks through through the works you do. And what we see interesting is how you always take material as a theme for your exploration, yeah? And yeah, I'm just curious, what about material itself that made you want to focus on it and not other aspects such as seasonality or concepts or culture even? Yeah. Uh, for me, if, if we were to focus on uh, seasonality, or uh, concept, I think it's really driven by uh, a trend, or uh, it has a certain uh, expiration date to it. But if we focus on the material, it's actually part of the product already. And if not, it's the most important part of the product. So um, uh, by that, I mean, we hope that we could make something that is classic, that doesn't have to have any uh, expiration date tag along to it. We actually have a product that uh, has, uh, for example, the uh, Kolopak uh, is mm. made from zipper that has been used, the same product been used in a townhouse in Singapore. Uh, it's been used in the uh, uh, resort field uh, in Maldives. And also it's been used in a sort of Chinese traditional house in Bali. So it's one product can be used in different settings. I think that, that's what, uh, we didn't realize this when we first did the, this sort of uh, investigation, but this is what we, we did then. And then I think by chance, we, 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 we did something that is not tied to trend or to a concept, right? But okay. culture-wise, I think because uh, I'm Indonesian, Chinese, and there are certain aspects of aesthetic value that I like. And then I think there, there's something that is uh, given to me uh, automatically. And you can see this in our product. And I'm very uh, proud of that. So culture we still have, but 
uh, concept-wise and seasonality, we try to avoid that as much as we could. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, one of the more common problems we see is that when artists make art, uh, when they transfer hands, it sort of becomes uh, the job of the, the exhibitor or the galleries to somehow explain the concept or the message of the artwork, right? Um, so that it can be received by the public well. Um, so does this mean that it is any easier for you to communicate meaning or nudge the senses through materials? Yes, I think. But uh, I actually don't mind people uh, to interpret our product in a different way. And I, I found that very interesting because uh, one, our tagline in the company, if you see Ong Chen Kuang at the bottom, is in new light. In new light actually meaning um, uh, new lights. There's double meaning to it, also meaning a new way of looking at things. So it's actually in our tagline that we do not mind if people have a certain interpretation to the product. Uh, the product is already uh, being purchased by them anyway, and uh, they are the ones that have to uh, see it, and if they have a new way of uh, displaying it, I'm very happy with that. So it's, uh, I, it's different from artwork. Yeah, every, everybody have their own certain uh, take in the product. I think that that's very interesting. Right, I think material is sort of universal that everyone can sort of relate to it and it is so that it's open for different kinds of exploration. Okay, um, so you were born and raised in Sumatra and the studio is based in Bali, right? Um, I'm pretty sure that in anyone's cases, who we are today, what we do, what we choose, what we do, uh, everything has to do with our upbringing. Yes, you did mention how it was sort of natural for you to wanting to help out with the paper folding and doing crafts, right? Um, but do you ever think that handcrafting is somehow embedded in those cultures you're from? Yeah, handcrafting uh, is more uh, wide open. It's not just based on a certain culture. I live in Bali. Uh, I consider Bali is actually my home now. But I, like you said, I was born in Sumatra. But uh, um, Balinese with handcrafting definitely have a more uh, substantial uh, a link than if I was in Sumatra. Uh, because in Balinese, all the celebration, all the uh, ceremonial is to do with handcrafting as well. But having said that, handcrafting itself is, I think, is more. It's more everywhere. It's not just uh, based on a certain place. For me, handcrafting in the first place is, of course, it's used to make tools first. Uh, in the well, in the old days, uh, no matter, uh, mm. uh, in the old days anyway. But after that, of course, there is um, we make artifacts and for ceremonial purposes. And then after that, it has um, a sort of uh, economic value tied to it. But I think handcrafting basically is everywhere. It's not just based on Sumatra or Bali. Well, that's a very deep insight we just said there. The fact that the necessity of craft is generated from having to make tools for a cultural ceremony. And then only then it can have some economical value to it. So craft is sort of embedded to bridge tradition with innovation, right? To what extent can it promote these traditional values as well? For me, I think uh, we have to appreciate both. We have to honor the traditions and you have to embrace the innovations for sure. Um, but I like to look, usually look uh, to the basic of things. Since that our product is actually made in a, in a, in a workshops, we actually uh, away from the traditional uh, traditions, right? But uh, I think we create our own traditions uh, in, in our workshops. We have a certain way of to uh, do things. And the other thing is craft is, is very much to do with hand and human. Mm. Uh, I think that there's a sort of a, a very uh, big link to it, right? So uh, in that sense that uh, all the artisans or the, the staff that are making the products is most important because if they're happy, their workmanship will be good. So is it tradition? Is it innovation? I'm not sure, but uh, it's tradition is important. Innovation is important. Uh, 
now we create our own tradition because we have our own identity in the workplace. Right. So that's the reason you choose to still handcraft all your lighting fixtures, yeah? Mm. Do you ever see manipulating of materials as a way of going back to nature? Or do you ever get inspired by nature is what I meant to say. <laughs> yes, um, I'm very insp inspired and fascinated with nature. I think uh, there's so many things in nature that I'm, I'm uh, interested about. Uh, there is a lot of repetition in nature, uh, the organic element in nature. Also, I consider that the product that we have is actually the representative of nature. If you see our product, uh, there was an underlining uh, of something that is quite organic to it. Uh, most of our product is malleable, so it's, you can shape them slightly. It's not, mm. it's not, uh, it's not solid. And uh, there's a sense of fragility in our product as well, which is very part, a very big part of nature, I think. So, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm always inspired by nature. Hmm. And do you think crafting or doing what you do is a gift or is it something that can be taught to other people? I mean, is it something off nature or is it something off nurture? Right. Um, I think I'm very lucky. I'm able to do what I'm passionate about. Uh, so it is a gift for me to be able to do this uh, as, uh, as a living, right? But having said that, uh, nurture is very important. Uh, one big part of um, design is instinct. But for me, instinct is something that you learn. Uh, it's, I'm not saying that this is a solid institution's kind of learning. I'm saying that you learn by uh, uh, your family, by your background, by where you live is very important because your surroundings, it, 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 it gives back a lot to you by your design influences, by your lifestyle, I think. Uh, so all these uh, are accumulated together and they, they, they will add to your instinct. So it's not something that you're born with. It's something you, you learn as you go along. So uh, can you teach somebody else to do what I do? Yes. Can they do the same things? No, but the idea was not actually teaching something what I do. It's about teaching something that they are interested in. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. I think, I think uh, teaching in the sense of teaching them to know who they are rather than teaching them doing exactly what I do. You know what I'm saying? So. It, it, yes, you can teach them, but maybe yeah. into a different, different uh, design, uh, philosophical uh, identity, rather than having the same one as mine. So, if it is through um, exploration and through time, um, do you think it's important that we sort of develop um, a feedback loop that will tell us oh, if you're doing a good job or if you're doing a bad job? if you're improving or if you're getting worse? Yeah. Um, having feedback from people is not necessarily uh, something that is uh, good or bad. I think if somebody buys something from you that you do, there's actually a, a good feedback already, meaning they, uh, they like what you do uh, first. Mm. And also I think it's not necessarily about having a feedback. It, it's, uh, it's about knowing who you are more than anything. I think if you like what you do, you can find a niche of people that like what you do and then you, you get, a, get a, a match up. It's more important to, to, to do well what you're doing and then find the right market for it because there will be a market for every single thing. Uh, if you appreciate what you're doing, automatically there will be a market for it. You know what I'm saying? Having said that, of course, feedback, you listen to them, but you not necessarily will uh, use them as the, the talking point for your work. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just, uh, 
it's good to get feedback, but not necessarily all need to be listened to or need to be uh, uh, become the most important things in your work. You just have to find a way which is work for you. Somehow it will work its way into the market. Yeah, that makes sense. So first and foremost is knowing yourself, finding your identity, right? And then you get it going, see if it works or it doesn't work for you. And this is where the feedback loop happens, yeah. Right. Um, there's another question would be, is there one material that stood out to you when you did experimentation with them? The one material that I feel that, that I like the most is actually zipper. Uh, this material, we've been using it for 11 years now, uh, since the beginning, 2007, actually, I had to start to work with Zipper. Um, it's the first material, I feel that it's sort of uh, the most successful collaboration between me and the material. Um, you know, um, when we, uh, I love lights, so every time I look at material, I... I always have a question, can this become a lighting? Can this, be, uh, this, can this material disperse light? What happens if I put the light source behind the material? So this question happens in my mind all the time, every time I see material. So we have a bundle of uh, material collection, uh, 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 liberally in the office that I'm working with and then I, I abandon and then I go back to it after a certain period of time. With zipper, so it's, um, First, it's not the go-to material to make lamp. So there's a surprise element to it. Um, mm. and, um, and it's actually the best way to promote our products with the surprise element. For example, our distributor in Italy, what they did was uh, they, they, uh, they sort of, they have this uh, uh, drum band, piano and everything, sort of like a concert uh, settings, and they have our lamps in there. And then they open, they invite all the agents to, to, the, to, the, to the workshops. They open the, the curtains and we, they see our products. And they didn't tell them the material of the products. What they did was they invite everybody to go to the stage and look at the products. And when people look at them and then they, they realize it's zipper, it becomes something that is, they will remember. So there's a surprise element to it. Mm. Uh, the second thing is uh, every material is different. Zipper uh, has a certain quality that uh, I cannot replace it with a different material. Uh, the teeth of zipper, they work together uh, in lines and repetitions mm. and they disperse like, yeah. not like no other material. So uh, I think I cannot say enough about zipper. <laughs> but uh, right. uh, for me, it is still something that I'm very uh, fond of. Yeah, I mean, it turns out so beautiful, the light shadow play, the rhythm and sequence, and also the layering effect, right? Um, so what's next? I mean, what other specific materials or specific technical processes that you would like to experiment with? Um, Material-wise, uh, zipper is still, uh, for me, uh, working with material is like a, a journey. So Zipper, as I say, is 11 years journey now. Uh, on the ninth year, we are able to make something which is quite big with Zipper. Uh, we make a, a, a pendants uh, 120 in diameter with uh, 1,700 meters of Zipper to make one lamp. This is the biggest one we can make so far. Uh, that's Zipper. Now we have a new direction with Zipper. So it's the, the journey is continuing to a uh, next chapter. We use different technique. Uh, we're using uh, 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 sort of a knitting, two, hand, two needle knitting with zipper. It, it creates a new look. So there's a new direction. Uh, the second material that I'm working with now, I'm very fascinated by is metal wire. We've been working with it for three years now. Uh, it, it's still at the beginning of the journey at the moment. Uh, our newest collections, uh, Bunga Kartas, is made from uh, wire. Um, now, um, so the journey will continue and we have different uh, techniques, so it will be another journey. Um, 
Other material that I would like to work with would be uh, paper. I think paper is mm. so uh, underrated. Um, the quality that paper able to disperse light also is cannot be replaced, especially handmade paper. But uh, the paper, the value in paper opinion about paper is still not there yet. So uh, we have new collection now with paper, but it's the beginning. Uh, what I feel is that we need to teach people, we need to educate uh, the market how to appreciate a certain material. So uh, I almost try again. Now, now paper, I love. Um, I love to work with uh, clay, uh, ceramic, glass. Um, but um, I have to draw a certain line in terms of choosing material because uh, if I, I love to have uh, uh, innovative material to work with, but at the same time, um, there's a lot of aspect to it we need to answer when we choose material. Because um, if it's high-tech material, how is it available locally? That's very important to, to me. Of course, if we're talking about making one product only, uh, uh, custom pieces, I would go crazy with uh, material selections. But we, we are, if we talk about longevity, longevity, longevity we have to do something that is, um, that is abundant, that is available uh, always. Because in the end, we have to be consistent in making the products. Yeah. I see. I think in my perspective uh, from this whole conversation, what really stood out to me was when you said you were actually building not just objects, but also culture and traditions uh, that the people that work in your studio are your greatest assets. And why? Because it becomes something so much bigger than that, right? The value that you teach them, they will take to their own homes and then apply it to... I don't know, their children, their families. You know, in the beginning when I start doing uh, this, all I, I'm thinking is about design. I'm thinking about uh, to make products that I'm proud of. But having a company is a different uh, beast, I think. I'm very good because I have a, a partner that support me in this company, that we uh, have the same visions of the company. As I say, to start with, it's about products, it's about getting uh, the product to the market. But having a, a group of people working with you, it suddenly become a family uh, sort of uh, settings. So in that sense that you have to uh, appreciate them, you have to uh, uh, teach them so they have the same vision as you. And of course, this is not something that is very easy to, to do. Um, it's through trial and error to see what works, what doesn't work. What, in the beginning, what I found uh, frustrate, frustrating is actually, uh, I see that they do a very good job. They are very uh, skillful, but they do not appreciate what they are doing. You know what I mean? So uh, mm. they, they just feel that this is yeah, yeah. things that everybody can do. Uh, when they came to us, they don't have skills, but the, the only cr criteria that we would accept workers is if they want to learn. So we, we take everybody and then we shift through the system, we shift them through the system. If they did not work, they will go out. They will, they will quit. So it, it, it's natural uh, progressions. But people that stay with us is people that love what they're doing. So, um, but then how do we make them appreciate what they're doing? Uh, uh, we realize that uh, it's by communications, I think. Uh, the way we do it is um, we have done exhibition uh, overseas. We have done exhibition in Indonesia. We do a nice setting of our products. We, uh, the customer appreciate our products. The setting where the customer is, is, is various places and always a nice setting. And... Um, if we communicate those across to our workers, they understand that how 
it, the product that they are doing is being appreciated in a, in a different way. Because uh, the workers do not see the products in the setting. They, see the, they make the product, they put in the box and send out. So um, now we do, now and again, we do sort of a presentation to our workers how the product being per perceived outside of the company. I think then they would be able to understand. Mm, wow, that's amazing. It's always nice chatting with you, Budiman. Thank you so much for this session and hope to see you another time. Thank you.